Believing that you're destined for heaven when you're not would be the most tragic self-deception. David Servant's book, The Great Gospel Deception, will help you be sure that heaven will be your eternal home. Order your copy at heavenward.tv. Alrighty, welcome back. And I promised you we'd get into Acts 2, verse number 43, so may I keep my promise. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe. And uh, why was that? Well, a couple reasons, but one was just when you really start thinking about the, what Jesus did for us on Calvary, and you really start thinking about how great God is and this amazing universe that he's made and how he's created us for his pleasure and how uh, you know he loves us and has made us his children. I mean, that just fills us with awe all the time. We ought to be always awe-inspired. But secondly, because as the rest of the verse goes on uh, and says, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. Uh, we all long, I think, to see that again. And um, so many people long to see that, that they're willing to settle for less than the real thing. Um, it, it saddens me when people uh, are so easily uh, seduced by some guy who says I'm an apostle uh, getting up in front of a crowd of people and claiming revelations, sometimes and many times unbiblical revelations, prophesying out of his own mind on biblical things, and then uh, pushing people over or suggesting that they fall over and calling that supernatural. These are not the kind of things that the original apostles were doing. You know, we're gonna read eventually in chapter five, they were laying people out on the streets of Jerusalem so that when Peter walked by, at least his shadow might fall upon them. And apparently people were being healed just uh, by that, okay? So no, no doubt there'd be a sense of awe amongst everybody, particularly in regard to the ministry of the apostles who were anointed with signs and wonders. Um, it didn't happen forever there in Jerusalem. It's certainly not happening there today, is it? Uh, but there are times and seasons when it just seems like there's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in different places where there are reports of miracles. Uh, I've traveled all over the world. I've looked into some really spectacular miracles that have been reported. Uh, one in particular was a guy who was uh, raised from the dead after about two days of being dead and placed in a mortuary, uh, morgue rather, and uh, partially embalmed and so forth and I personally went to Nigeria and investigated that on two occasions and talked to all the key players and was convinced that it was indeed a real miracle um, and I wrote about it you can go to our website again and uh, you know find an article on a, a guy by the name of Daniel uh, Daniel Ekachuku uh, on our on our website and it tells all about that amazing miracle and what what transpired but still I'm not satisfied yet. I would love to live in a time or be in a place where we could have a, 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 a conglomeration of apostles in one city who God is using in sign, signs and wonders and stirring the entire city. That, that would be wonderful. All right, now, verse number 44. And all those who had believed were together. Once again, there's that togetherness. They love each other. They weren't organized together. They weren't arranged together. They just loved to be together. And they had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. And so their faith affected what they did with their possessions. The most basic thing is that they held all things in common. Now, this does not mean or imply that they all lived together in one building or in one compound or in one community so that you know we're all living in each other's homes uh, and so forth. That's not what it means. Um, the same uh, thing is mentioned in Acts chapter 4 and verse number 32. The congregation of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own. So I do possess it. It is my own, but I don't claim it as being my, my own, but all things were common property to them. That is, what I have is on loan from God, and I'm, uh, you know, because you're part of the same family, we hold all things in common. What is mine is thine. It's at your disposal. But 
I want you to think about what they had at that time that they would have held in common. These people did not have TV sets. They did not have cell phones. Uh, they did not have automobiles. They did not have wristwatches. They did not have computers. They did not have books. Uh, what did they have? I, I, you know, they had homes, very simple structures, adobe clay, you know, uh, nothing uh, elaborate that we are aware of. Um, they didn't have necessarily running water. They had to go fetch their water. Uh, they had, would have had some utensils, some cooking utensils, some bowls. They might have had some food. They had some clothing. Just the real simple necessities of life, those were the things that they held in common. Well, who, who would they have to share them with? Only with the people who didn't have those things, the ultra poor, as we would look at them. They would look at them as just the poor. And it's so interesting because we're so wealthy, what we define as poverty would never have been defined as poverty back in the days of the apostles. Um, biblical poverty is being without the necessities, without food or without clothing or without shelter. Okay, and so did they share their houses? They may well have shared their homes with those who had no place to live. Okay, did they share their food? Well, yeah, you don't have to share your food with people who have food, but you share food with people who don't have food. Do you have to share your clothing? Well, you, you know, you, you have to have enough clothing for yourself to wear, but, you know, J John the Baptist told people, whoever has two coats, share with him who has none. And so we are so insulated from that kind of poverty in our bubble world in this very wealthy uh, era and country in which most of us live. Uh, it's just hard, hard, hard to relate that. This is not to say that we shouldn't be involved in sharing our possessions but we're gonna to have to cross some miles to do that, okay? And we'll talk about that next time because when you're living in a rich kingdom, you know, you gotta get out of that kingdom if you're gonna help those who are biblically poor. That is those without food or covering. And if you follow the ministry of Heaven's Family, you know that that's what we're all about. We talk about this a lot because not enough people are talking about it. But we'll talk about it next time for sure. You don't wanna miss it. God bless you. See you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.